James Corden. Also, I haven't done anything wrong. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As you know, James Corden, asshole, was roundly lambasted as a consequence of his behaviour in a restaurant, Balthazar, in New York. The owner of the establishment described him as a tiny cretin of a man. And, as a consequence of that, there then came a grovelling apology. And then, because so many people really dislike James Corden, asshole, a variety of recollections about his other behaviours were shared widely across social media and in some mainstream media also. But this isn't the end of the matter. Oh, no, 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 no. Appearing in the New York Times, an article by Dave Itzkoff tells us, James Corden, asshole, would rather not talk about that omelette. In an interview to promote his coming series, Mammals, the actor and late-night host dismissed a flap stemming from an Instagram post accusing him of boorish restaurant behaviour. I think it's so silly, he said. Let's dive in and learn more about the way that this narcissist has dealt with this matter. The article tells us, the eggs were a problem again, but this time not for James Corden, arsehole. Corden, arsehole, the comic actor and host of CBS's The Late Late Show, was having breakfast on Thursday morning in the Mark restaurant by Jean Georges on Manhattan's Upper East Side, when he heard an, another patron at a nearby table curtly rebuking a waiter about the meal she had ordered. The eggs, it seemed, were not to her liking. Corden shot a conspiratorial glance across his own table to a New York Times reporter he was dining with and quietly said, Happens every day. It's happening in 55,000 restaurants as we speak. It's always about eggs. Pausing there, first of all, Corden, asshole, in his interactions with the reporter, who is possibly a non-intimate tertiary source, maybe a non-intimate secondary source to him, depending on how many interactions that they've had. Let's assume he's a non-intimate tertiary source. In the circumstances, he has to assert control over this reporter, over the journalist, because he's dining with him. He's on his radar. He hears somebody else engaging in a rebuke about the state of their eggs. As a consequence of that, in order to control... The journalist, Corden, arseholes, narcissism triangulates the journalist with the other diner who's complaining and utilizes it to say, see, I wasn't in the wrong. Eggs are a problem. I was right to speak out about it. See, this other person is also. Now, of course, there are repeated complaints about the quality of people's food but uh, that they received at a restaurant. And there's a lot more who don't, who enjoy the food. If they didn't, of course, those restaurants would simply go out of business. But notice with Corden, Arsenal's comment, happens every day. It's happening in 55,000 restaurants as we speak. Use of exaggeration. It's always about eggs. Note the use of always. Narcissists invariably use always and never because it's an extension of black and white thinking. It isn't always about eggs, is it? Waiter, waiter, there's a fly in my soup, or there's a hair in my croque monsieur. There's lots of different complaints. My steak isn't done correctly. Sometimes, of course, it's as a consequence of the ignorance of the diner. Sometimes it is because the food is substandard, and sometimes, as you know from my work, it's because the narcissist is triangulating somebody with the food in order to assert control and draw fuel. The article continues. More archly, he added... Can you imagine now, if we just blasted her on Twitter, would that be fair? This is my point. It's insane. Pity play. Basically saying, I got my ass roasted on Twitter and other social media. I don't think that's fair. So he makes that point to the journalist.
The article continues, The original goal of this conversation, to which Corden, asshole, and his press representatives had agreed at the start of the month, had been to talk about a new Amazon Prime video miniseries called Mammals that he is starring in, and his coming departure from The Late Late Show, which he will leave next year, after a tenure of more than eight years. I'm sure for the crew it feels like 80 uh, but that agenda was largely blown up on Monday when Keith McNally, the powerful restaurateur who prolifically shares his often controversial opinions on social media, wrote in an Instagram post that he had banned Corden, asshole, as a customer. Citing reports from his restaurant's managers, McNally said that Corden, asshole, had berated the staff for errors with his meals, including one in which Corden's, asshole's, wife had ordered an egg yolk omelette that arrived with some egg white. Now, notice the collateral consequence here appertaining to Corden, arsehole's narcissism, that the event is being brought up again, that originally, of course, the purpose of the piece in the New York Times was to talk about mammals, but it has been sidelined by reference to his omelette issues. McNally wrote that Corden, arsehole, is a hugely gifted comedian, but a tiny cretin of a man and the most abusive customer to my Balthazar servers since the restaurant opened 25 years ago. Challenge, fuel, threat to control. McNally wrote in a later Instagram post that Corden, arsehole, had apologised to him. See parts pass him for the analysis of that. But his initial post had already been widely circulated, puncturing the British entertainer's image as a genial master of ceremonies, and encouraging other social media users to resurface past accusations of rude public behaviour by Corden, arsehole. Collateral consequences, additional challenge fuel, damage to appearance. On Thursday morning, after a long interview in which Corden, arsehole, variously said that the debate about him was not worth acknowledging, haughty dismissiveness, and that he was likely to address it in Monday's broadcast of The Late Late Show, assertion of control utilising his platform, he defiantly declared that he did not want credit for going ahead with what could have been, and often was, an awkward conversation. So quite simply, I'm not going to talk about my bad behaviour, and I think you should praise me for not talking about my bad behaviour. Delusion, self-centeredness, assertion of control by nullification of threat to control. The article continues, I haven't done anything wrong on any level, he said. This isn't Corden, arsehole sat there thinking, I know I've done wrong, but I'm going to say this anyway. He truly believes that he hasn't done anything wrong. This is his narcissism writ large, causing him to see through the delusion, his own subjective worldview, that he's not in the wrong. And therefore, what he goes on to state, so why would I ever cancel this? I was there. I get it. I feel so zen about the whole thing, grandiosity, arrogance, because I think it's so silly. I just think it's beneath all of us. It's beneath you. It's certainly beneath your publication. Implicit threat, you shouldn't really be talking about this because it's such a trivial matter and I haven't done anything wrong, so what's the fuss about? To American viewers who largely became aware of Corden, asshole, when he took over as the Late Late Show host in March 2015, he has come to be seen as an aggressively affable star. He has helped to reinvigorate his laid-back late-night franchise with signature segments like Carpool Karaoke, and he has handled hosting duties for the Grammy Awards and Tony Awards. Even his on-screen misfires, like a role in the abhorred 2019 film adaption of Cats, did little to impede his career trajectory which, of course, remains one of the great mysteries of the world. It then talks about mammals. It talks about uh, what um, Corden Arsehole did in Britain, being in the History Boys, Gavin and Stacey, talks about his memoir. And then the article states, Corden Arsehole also wrote of an incident at a 2008 awards show when after he received a comedy acting trophy and Gavin and Stacey won an audience award, he had used an acceptance speech to complain that the show had not been nominated in the best sitcom category. Arrogance, delusion, grandiosity, pity play. Castigating himself after the fact for this huge sense of entitlement, Gordon Arsell wrote, I can see why and how it must have looked. 
ungracious, ungrateful, and brattish. But the point is, notwithstanding his ability to see this, he then just dismisses it and carries on behaving in the same way, which demonstrates that there is no genuine insight there. It is superficial insight for the purposes of assertion of control in the moment to make people think, oh, he sees that he was bad. He sees that he was a see you next Tuesday. And therefore, he realizes that he was ungracious, ungrateful, and brattish. Let's forgive him and move on. McNally's Instagram post, the article tells us, painted a picture of a privileged celebrity who had not changed much in the intervening years. In one manager's report, Corden, arsehole, was described as being extremely nasty after he had found a hair in his food, demanding free drinks to be placated, sense of entitlement, assertion of control, residual benefit. A second report on the egg yolk omelette meal said that Corden, arsehole, began yelling like crazy after the restaurant tried to remedy its initial mistake on his wife's order with a replacement dish that included home fries instead of the salad she had requested. At Thursday's breakfast, Corden, arsehole, did not give his own account of what had happened. In these incidents, all discuss whether he had apologised. Arrogance, haughtiness, dismissal. At first, he parried any discussion of McNally's posts or the reaction to them. Asked if he was feeling all right, Corden, arsehole, cagely said, about what? What do you mean? Dismissal? Arrogance? haughtiness. When asked directly if he was aware of the conversation about him that McNally's post had initiated, Corden Arsehole said, I haven't really read anything. It's strange. It's strange when you were there. I think I'm probably going to have to talk about it on Monday's show. Uh, my feeling often is never explain, never complain. Of course there, character trait acquisition from the late Ma Her Majesty, the late Queen Elizabeth II. But I'll probably have to talk about it. He added, as he had said several times in the conversation, that it feels like such a silly thing to talk about, invalidation, belittlement. Corden, arsehole, said that any online criticism of him likely reflected the awareness and opinions of a small part of the overall population. Diminution, it doesn't. The vast majority of people commenting really don't like him, and they are representative of a lot of people. Um, should we not all be a little grown up about this? He said, I promise you. Ask around this restaurant. They don't know about this. Maybe 15% of people. I've been here, been walking around New York. Not one person's come up to me. We're dealing in two worlds here. Yeah, the problem here, dimwit, is what you're confusing is the fact that in New York, people are used to seeing famous people around and therefore are like, so what? And largely let people get on with their lives. Furthermore, where they have recognised you, the last thing they want to do is have anything to do with you because you're such a twat. Of course, James Corden, arsehole's narcissism, causes him to think that oh, no, nobody knows about it, nobody's interested in it. So notice that he actually accepts that it happened, but he just dismisses it as something not worth talking about. The article continues. He added, if I lived on Twitter, Hillary Clinton as the President of the United States and Jeremy Corbyn won by a landslide. Deflection, triangulation. While Corden Arsehole said he was not denying anyone's right to criticise him online, he compared the news media's amplification of negative social media posts to a school principal offering aid to classroom bullies. Playing the victim? Pity play. Sound like anybody you know? The principal makes the decision to stand up and say, I'd like all of those bullies to come up onto the stage and say into the microphone what they've just been saying in the hallway over there, he said. This shows the level of delusion and lack of insight that Corden Arsehole has in that he was being called out for his own behaviour, which happened, which he then apologised for, or purportedly did so, but now is saying, in effect, I was the one that was bullied. And when people talk about it on social media, this is like the school principal allowing the bullies to carry on the bullying in an amplified manner. Again, notice the similarity of mentality between Corden, arsehole, and Harry's wife. I've done something wrong, but actually I haven't, because I'm the victim in all of this, and now I'm being roundly bullied. Harry's wife, I behaved like a bully towards the staff at Buckingham Palace, but you're all racist who didn't support me when I was suicidal, and then I was the one that had to leave because you're so hateful towards me. I am the victim. The article concludes that the breakfast conclusion, Corden, arsehole, offered a cordial goodbye and left the restaurant. 
The waiter who served him said she was only vaguely aware of who he was. I know he's famous, she said. I think he's British. An excellent example of Corden, asshole, and the way that his narcissism just dismisses what has gone on. It showcased, again, his unpleasant behaviour and what he really is. It brought to the fore his other unpleasant behaviour, because this was resurrected by, no doubt, salivating journalists and ordinary folk around the world who can't stand this untalented blob. Furthermore, all of this is everybody else's fault, nothing to see here, and the fact that you're all talking about this means you're bullying me. This gives you brilliant insight into how narcissists just carry on moving forward as if nothing has happened. Those of you who wouldn't, of course, engage in this behaviour in the first place, but just let's say you've had a really shitty day, so your emotional empathy has been reduced for said waiter so that you lose your shit in the way that Corden asshole did. Afterwards, if you got a roasting on social media, you'd probably go into hiding for a period of time because you'd feel so bad about your original behaviour and the kicking that you're getting on social media. But not the narcissist. It's all fuel and what's there to talk about? Because once it's happened, it falls off the cliff. It evaporates into the ether. That's the way that we work. That's why we're able to continue to go forward. Of course, it's brought up on his radar when the journalist... Mr. Itzkov brings it back up, therefore it's a threat to control, which he nullifies in the moment by asserting control over the journalist by saying, nothing really here to talk about and actually I'm the victim, and indirectly asserts control over those that have commented against him by betraying them all as bullies. This article provides us with an excellent demonstration of the mindset of the narcissist and the associating behaviours. Please do ensure that you like this video. It's most important to ensure that it increases its prominence and share the fuck out of it to ensure that other people understand about another aspect of the narcissistic dynamic and they don't go around just thinking James Corden, arsehole, is just simply a conceited dickhead, but they understand that this is a behaviour of a narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.